Hey, it's fans, people in webs, it's me, your hilarious jackass, I'm with SG1 or Tony, back for another Starship, the official Starships collection review. Yes, I'm getting caught up now, I've just got one more to do after this one, which is the Queen's Diamond. Um, yeah, so I'm getting caught up now. Um, I did a short shift at work today, I'm just chair stuck, there we go. I did a short shift at work today and I thought, you know what, I'll come home and, and I'll get a fucking... Um, Review done. Yeah. Sue. Sue, let's get in. As per usual, we get the magazine. Awesome. And then we get the ship. But more on that in a little bit. Um, so, we'll get to cracking on, shall we? Cheyenne. Oh, yeah. Um, issue 108. Cheyenne class. Or USS Hawani. Uh, NCC 736620. So, we'll get cracking on. Specification. Uh, type. Like cruiser example, USS Awahani, um, NTC 71620, large 24th century, length 362 meters, crew um, 320, um, top speed 9.6 weapons, phaser emitters, and photon torpedoes. Oh, excuse me, oh, I was up here this way, sorry, ah, unprofessional. Um, and we get a nearly nice CG render of the ship there, um, really nice indeed. Cheyenne class, um, such as the USS Wahani, features source of separation, uh, source section that was very similar to one found on a Galaxy class ships, but on a smaller scale. The, the four warp nacelles attached to the rear of the saucer um, were unique to the Cheyenne class. Yes. Um, apart from the Enterprise D, the USS Wahani was the only ship. From the fleet that was pulled back into service following the Battle of 359 the following year. The Awahani was part of the um, attacking attacking network set up by Starfleet to try and stop cloaked Romulan ships from resupplying the Duros sisters in the Klingon Civil War. And they made a nice um, topographical view of it there. It's very nice. It's one of those that's exactly the same both top and bottom. Like the... Um, it's like... Um, an updated version of the um, uh, oh, Constellation class. There we go, I can't think of it. Like a more modern version of the Constellation class. The USS Bellerophon and the USS Yamaguchi uh, rushed to the aid of the Saratoga as it was held in the Borg's tractor beam. Their efforts were in vain as the cube easily destroyed all three ships. The USS Wahani... Ah, here we go. Um... I'm, I'm probably saying this wrong, but USS Hawahani's names uh, originated from Native American, a uh, Native American word for Yosemite Valley. Other Starfleet ships with Native American names included the Crazy Horse, Lakota, Malinche, and uh, Pueblo. Mm. For the cells, the Cheyenne class was one of the very few types of Starfleet vessels to have more than two nacelles. Other vessels had four, four nacelles were Constellation, Cla Constellation class and Prometheus class. Actually, the Prometheus has six, because when the source separates, two tiny nacelles come out on the top and bottom. So it has six, not four. Four big ones, but two little ones too. Uh... Two more fauna cell vessels could be seen at the Quilla 2 surplus depot in Star Trek Next Generation Episode Unification Part 1. These were both study models of the Excelsior class that had been added, uh, created by uh, Industrial Layer Magic. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Jesus. I'm tired. And a lot of work. I'm going to have a lot more work. Black Friday on Friday. Yes, I'm not waiting. I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, um,. Commander Chakotay uh, encountered a group of co a cooperative, a Borg cooperative, in the Delta Quadrant in 2373. This group included several um, familiar races, including Klingons, Romulans, Cardassians, and humans. They were all assimilated during the Borg's earlier incursion into the Alpha Quadrant. And then we got Battle of Wolf 359 fleet listings. So we've got these are the ones that have even been made, um, either come from the script or named in episodes. So we have the Tolstoy, USS Tolstoy, NCC 620595, the USS Kyushu, which we've got already, um, 
5491, the Melbourne 62043, which is an Excelsior class, and then the same Melbourne as a, as a, a weird Nebula class. We're getting this soon as well. Um, the Wahani 73620, the Yamaguchi 26510, the Bellerophon 62048. A lot of 620s in this fight. The Gage 11672, the Bonestall um, 31600, the Firebrand 68723, the Buran 57580. Princeton 59804, Saratoga 31911, we have that already. The Chekhov, um, not to be confused with Pavel Chekhov, but rather the um, the author, Chekhov. Um, 57302, The Liberator 67016. Now, The Liberator is an obvious callback to Blake 7, which is a fantastic sci-fi series. Um, made by the BBC during the time of Doctor Who in the in the seventies and eighties, really cool. Um, and there is a shuttle there um, which was blasted open, and there's a dead crewman aboard, which is really cool. Not for the crewman, obviously, but you know. Sorry, my computer's uh, doing stuff. Hang on, there we are. Uh, then the Roosevelt two five seven three Excelsior players, and then we got visual visual. Uh, Effects guys doing the model, we've got the model crew, uh, the late great Gary Hutzel there, um, the late great Gene Roddenberry too. I think we've got Who oh, is isn't that picture? Um, Ronald D. Moore, Ronald B. Moore, sorry, Dan Curry, um, Peter Larritson, there's Tony Manninger, uh, Greg Jane as well. So there's, you know, the usual crew. Uh, and then we goes into various things about the space dock. Okay, the space dock. Woohoo! From time next year, um, all the different visual effects that they used in the show, from models to CG to optical effects. Uh, and then we've got on screen. Best appearance, best of both worlds, part two. Star Trek TNG. Rather in the distance, um, and it's really far in the distance as well. Um, okay, I think. It's that one there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Um, let's see if I can show you. It is that one just there. Way off in the distance. Way off. Um, so, Best of Both Worlds Part 2 was made in a time that CG was commonplace on TV. Therefore, prohibitively expensive to show the Battle of Wolf 359 on screen. The makers of the show got around this by choosing, choosing to feature only the aftermath of the battle. This cleverly created even more intense experience for the viewers' minds as the Enterprise D Bridge officers um, recited, along with stunned horror, the carnage of the drifting wreckage of dozens of Starfleet ships. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's really good because you can the, the snippet you get is from. Admiral Hansen's message, and it's kind of you see the red alert behind, and and then suddenly the communication is disrupted, um, and then you kind of in your mind going, is it going well or not? You know, if the admiral ship's been destroyed, it's not going well, boys. Uh, the Mars defense security pods shown in the rest of the Part Two were based on parts taken from a submarine model used in the hunt for Red October, and were get, were called the Blue Grey October by the TNG production staff. Uh, one of these models would later show up and be used as uh, depicted the Solomon Wave Rider drone from the episode New Ground. Admiral Hansen reve revealed that in Captain Picard's youth, he was the first freshman of Starfleet Academy to win the 40km marathon on Dan Danula 2 after he passed four upperclassmen in the last ridge. Yeah. Let me get a view of the top view of the ship there. So, onto the ship itself. Now, 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 now. This is really nice. It is really nice. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as nice as it is, but it's really cool. And you've got that view, which is the top view. That view is the bottom view, but it could be any. You know, it, it's the same on both sides. But that's no bad thing, you know. It kind of emulates the... Um, the uh, Constellation class. And uh, do you know what? It, it's one of those ships that I'd never thought I'd ever see, you know, as a model, 
Um, I've seen pictures of it floating around the internet and stuff. Um, and we've got clear plastic in the nacelles, which is good. About time. We've got clear plastics in the nacelles. And, funnily enough, the impulse engines are clear, uh, coloured black. Now, is that to suggest that this is a dead ship? Um, that's very clever, if it is. Um, and you can see the obvious um, you know, throwbacks to the Enterprise D. I have the Enterprise D here ready. Because on the underside, you can see the underside of the saucer there, um, you can see a lot of the same design that's gone into this. Although they used the same bridge module as the Enterprise D, pretty much. Um, but this is the idea that this is supposed to be a much smaller ship, on a much smaller scale. Um, but yeah, you can see that they've used a lot of, you know, basically, what they did was they took a lot of TN, um, Enterprise D model kits that were commercially available at the time and just kitbashed a load of ships together and hung them in the background and, and dead and floating in space and damaged them and stuff. That's why you never really got a good view of any of the ships. Um, and, you know, I'd, and, and, yeah, and then the cells were um, marker pens just glued on and, and coloured, you know, which is no, it's not a bad thing because they do look really cool like the cells. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Really cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. One thing mine has as a glaring join mark there. Yeah, that is a bit bad, boys. They could have they could have managed it to put it around there. Because you can see that this is the um star drive section. It'd have been cool if it could separate. Um because I remember way back when that um th there was a um, I can't speak today. Um, there was a card, a next generation um, trading card set out. And basically, half of it was, you know, ships or, um, um, you know, images from the show. You got ships, you got characters, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you got sort of like Enterprise phases and stuff like that. So it was, it was like pictures of various things. And then at the end of those, there was like a um, section of like 20 or 30 cards that were devoted to special effects and, and you know, like camera crew and stuff like that. And I remember one of the one of the shots was this very ship in the picture. Um, you know, and it was one of those things. It was like, oh, my God, the, that's, the, that's the closest ship, the closest photo we've ever had for it. And I've got a model of it in my hand, you know. I can recreate Battle of All 359 now. I've got a board cube, I've got the Kyushu, I've got the Saratoga, I just need the others now, which we're getting. The next batch should be Captain Proton's rocket ship and Springfield class. So we're getting another Wolf 359 veteran. So anyway, I'm, I'm digressing a bit. But yeah, um, lovely um, um, oh, moulded detail. I can't speak today. Mol lovely moulded detail. I love the nacelle uh, pylons there. They're really cool. I like the nacelles. Mine are on perfectly straight. Um, sorry, somebody's invited me on some on Xbox One. Sorry. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. The only letdown is that they haven't coloured in whatever that is. I'm I'm guessing that's a shuttle bay and that is and that is. So you've got three shuttle bays um, because obviously they're the nacelles, unless that's another uh, impulse engine at the back there. But then again, it's not really clear what they are. Um, I'd like to think that. That makes sense being a shuttle bay, being at the back and it's in between the nacelles so you can fly in and out with no problems. But yeah, it's really nice and I love the big register number on the top there. There we go, so you can see it. Um, Hawahani, 73620. Um, and then you've got the same on the bottom as well. They're really cool. I mean, for me personally, when if, if I'd have been building this ship, I'd have done it like normal and i put it behind the phase of a ray but you know that's just me but do you know what though looking at it i have bothered it's really cool um yeah it, it's a really nice model i can't stop talking about it love the starfleet insignia at the top on on the um whatever this the torpedo launcher because the torpedo launcher there and i like the fact that the um arrowhead they follow it on with the red and it goes all the way along there and it's same on the other side as well um, that's that's a really cool feature actually, um, yeah. Because it doesn't have it doesn't have Starfleet insignia on the nacelles, which for me I'd have done a Voyager and done one at the top, one at the bottom there. You know, um, you've got the name and register number on the each nacelle. You've got the register number there and the name on there. Same on the other side there. 
But yeah, it's really cool. It's a really nice model, actually. And it was one of those things I would never thought I'd ever see. Um, so we've got the base that says the, uh, the Cheyenne class. Um, and then it just fits on the model quite securely, I, I understand, rather. And there it is. Really nice. Really, really cool. I like this one a lot. I really do. Um, it, it's, again, one of the reasons why I'm still subscribing to this thing. You know, 100 and... What are, what are we on? What number is this one? 108 issues in. Plus whatever specials and that they've done as well. Um, and I'm and I'm fairly invested. I'm getting them all. Don't you worry about that, boys and girls. I will be getting every fucking ship that they produce. Because I am mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> Get on there proper there, yeah. But yeah, it, it no, it's a, it's a really nice model. It really is cool, and the fact that we're getting wolf, you know, wolf three five nine ships is just just insane, you know. Um, but awesome as well, you know what I mean? It was the kind of thing that they could have easily not done these, and you know, I would be perfectly happy. But to have these ships in my hand. You know, for the first time, I think, ever, is, is fantastic. Ben, you're doing a fantastic job. You're not watching my videos, but if you are, you're a fantastic job, mate. Hats off. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Um, a Tamarian Vessel and Hoosnock Ship at the top of my list. Oh, and a Promelian Battlecruiser. You know, so I can build a, a ship in a bottle. Anyway, yeah, so that's me. That's the USS Hawahani. Um... Please like, share and subscribe this video um, and hit that notification bell. Tell me when I've got new content out um, and I'll learn to speak next time too. Uh, <laughs> so join us next time for another one of these reviews. I might do another Transformer because I did a Transformers review uh, late, recently as well. So thank you very much. Please um, like, share and subscribe and and feel free to comment in the uh, shouting box is the comment section. And I will catch you all later. Bye for now.